Hi there, I'm Janelle Lawrence, the Urban Teacher, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I wanted to go about mini units I've been talking about in previous videos. So in previous videos, I've spoken about a lesson or I've shown you pieces of, an, of a lesson that I'm going to be doing in one of my very first social studies class of this year. In fact, it's the first lesson that is content specific. So in the first couple of days, I'm going to go over norms and procedure and that kind of stuff. But this is the first lesson that it is all about the content. And for those who are joining us, joining me for the first time, I am a middle school social studies teacher and this year I'll be teaching sixth grade social study, which is all about geography of the Eastern Hemisphere. Okay, so I started making this mini lesson or I started developing my own curriculum and changing from the curriculum that the New York State gave me, which is Passport for Social Studies, because I felt like it was lacking some of the things that I needed. Um, my admin at first, as a new teacher, really wanted me to follow that curriculum. But as I grew as a teacher, uh, my admin noticed that, listen, you need to be more rigorous. You need to push the students more. And the passport curriculum wasn't doing that. Like, it's really good if you're a first-year teacher and just need something to follow. So I started developing my own curriculum. So if you're a first-year teacher, I wouldn't suggest developing a curriculum. I might use the curriculum that the district or the state gives you. Or I might look at other veteran teachers for their curriculum. So I'm going to go over mine just in case you're a new teacher and want to use it. But I'm also going over this for other teachers who are ready to take the step and start creating their own curriculum to see um, some of the steps or my process of how creating it. So first I'm going to go over my mini unit um, overview or plan where I just put the five I, I put all the standards that I'm going to be using, how I'm going to break up the lessons and the learning targets. Then I can take you into the actual mini unit that I have available in TPT for you to um, go over. If you're watching this and you haven't seen my other my previous videos where I talk about um, that free lesson, like lesson number one, um, please stay tuned. I'll go over that lesson as well as if you if you're not sure if you want to buy a whole mini unit from me you can also download that free one or if you are a teacher looking to develop your own mini units and you want to see um how i did one lesson or maybe even start dipping into, into making your lessons i would say look in the description look for the link for the free download of lesson one now without further ado i'm gonna come off of this and we're going to start screen sharing my computer so that you can see the whole process. All right, so this is the unit plan for geography and development. This is actually the whole unit plan. I'm still developing it, but I'm just going to share the first one. So these are the topics that will be in the unit plan. So right now we're looking at geography and development. I have five themes of geography already done and maps. Um, for it to be more rigorous, I'm actually going to do maps and settlements and then environmental concerns. So this, these are the topics that will be in a full unit plan. But let's go to where I want the mini unit for this one. So mini unit one, geography and development. These are the standards. I always start with my standards. If it's anything you're going to learn from me, standards is where we begin. So the standard is 6.1, present-day Eastern Hemisphere geography. The diverse geography of the Eastern Hemisphere has influenced human culture and settlement patterns in distinct ways. Human communities in the Eastern Hemisphere has adapted to, to or modify the physical environment. And then um, this is the middle school next generation literacy standards. So six to eight middle school. And this is reading history point one. So R1 cites specific textual evidence to support analysis of primary and secondary source. R4, determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in text, including content-specific vocabulary related to history, social studies, and RSNW, writing, history, science, and technology for middle school. <laughs> so W2, write informative, expl explanatory text, focus on discipline-specific content. So these are the standards. And... This one, that's the unit standard. That's the one I'm expected to do by the New York State. But then I chose the literacy standards that I wanted to focus on this very first unit. 
And I really wanted to do um, vocabulary because I want them to learn or to practice or develop a stronger sense of um, vocabulary retention. So lesson one is going to be understanding geography. Lesson two is geography impact on development. So this is where I decided how long I, I need to teach that um, this mini unit. And I broke it up into what I feel like should happen every day. Geography's impact on development, draft a presentation on geogra geographic influence on development, create a presentation. So these are where we're really doing the um, project-based learning on I, w I don't want to call it project-based learning because it's not the project-based learning, but it's a, um, what should I call it? I should call it a unit assessment or, I don't know call it project-based learning. I have to figure out, I have to remember what I'm calling it, but it's the end of unit um, assessment where we're going to show what we have learned. And then these are the learning targets. So learning targets, um, are dependent on the standard as well as the topic for the day. So students will accurately define differenti and differentiate the difference between geography and development because that's the name of the units and I really want them to know that um, information. In the context of the Eastern Hemisphere, students will investigate and articulate how various geographical features of the Eastern Hem Hemisphere have influenced the development of human communities in these regions. So these are very so you see a little bit of R4 here, as well as the content. Here you see a more R4, and a lot of R1 actually, and the content. Students will practice citing um, textual evidence for information text when discussing the geography and its impact on development. So another R1 with the, the content. And students will synthesize their previous research findings into an informative Google Slides presentation, demonstrating how the geographic influence, how geography influence development. So all of this, and this is very W2 with the um, content. So now that I've gone over my unit plan, um, I can show you the unit. And here, I haven't finished the whole, this is the mini unit plan. So if I look at the whole unit plan, in the end, the assessment or their project that they're gonna do, it's a Google slide. So I wanted to sh teach them with every mini unit how to um, engage the computer. But I will show you what I mean in a second. So this is the drive. If you um, were to download it, this is how it looks. If you're working with the free lesson, this is how it looks. So in the free lesson, you have, and if you want to follow along, that makes sense. You have the lesson plan here, um, completely editable. There's a Google slide. You can put in your differentiation, that kind of stuff. I actually have a lesson plan template. So if you open this, it's just a simple lesson plan. There's no space dedicated just for, um, your modification for unique learnings. But if you download my lesson plan template, you can use this and put it over there. And that, once you're creating your own and you're adding to it, that's something you can share with your co-teacher. But please don't share my lessons with anyone unless you buy multiple um, licenses. So that's the lesson plan. It comes with the slides, the informational text that you're gonna need, an exit ticket. And um, if you want, the, the worksheets, it comes differentiated already, and then there's the answer sheet. So everything that you need to teach this lesson, that's the free one. But today we're not looking at the free one because I want to show you not just one lesson, but I want to show you the entire mini unit. So um, I can show you the lesson plan, but I think it's easier for me to just give an overview using the slides. So here you have five lesson plans for the five days of work, five slides. I like to separate minds. I know some teachers like to scroll up and down. I like to separate minds. I don't like the file getting too big. And then these are all the, the um, supports you need. So all the worksheets are on one. So for the five, for how many days of worksheets you need, you have regular and um, differentiated answer sheet. So all the worksheets you need for this particular mini unit. Um, this is like for when you're um, 
a slice template for when you're doing the project in the end. This is a presentation template just to help students get started with their presentation. So the first one is like an outline. And then these are the information text and exit tickets, everything that you need. But let's go and look at the slides. So this is the first lesson, Geography and Development. Um, our, folk, our unit question is, how does geography influence the development of an area? And then this is intentionally blank. If you want to change it, you can. And then here we have the focus question for the day. What does geography mean in the context of Afro-Ghana? So in this particular lesson, you're going to be looking at Afro-Ghana. I wanted to introduce students to a place that might, they might not have ever been. Or in case for students who are, I might have students from Accra or from Ghana that might be like, oh, wow, They're looking at my place. So that's why I chose that for the first lesson. Um, I will be able to define development and identi identify specific examples of development in Accra, Ghana, citing textual evidence to support my findings. So the first, we, we, we start off with, um, Remember that standard where I said that students have to do vocabulary? So this is their entry activity. They have, I think, a minute. I have to look at the lesson plan, but I think they have a minute to look at this image and try and um, just look at this image, read the excerpt. It says, development of a mall brought a lot of business to the area. So they're going to try the instructions for them to think about what does development mean. So they're just going to be looking, see if they can come to an idea of what development means. And it says the development of the paved road made traveling much easier. Again, they're seeing something from here to there. See, they can determine what development means. And then finally, development of the park provided a recreational space for the community. So then after they look at these three minutes, they have a, three minutes. They have to look at these three images or three sets of images. They have a minute each to just think about development. And now they're going to write Write your own definition of development based on what you have seen in this image. And this is the entry ticket or the entry activity. Um, I did a previous video on how the flow of a day a lesson should be. So I did a video on what a lesson plan should look like, which includes like standards, focus, vocabulary, um, learning objectives and targets, etc. Right. Then. So all this would have been there. Like I knew what my focus vocabulary was going to be. Today is going to be development. Then I also did a video on the flow of the day. And I said in every, in every lesson, you should have some kind of entry activity for various amounts of reasons. You can go look at the video or find that video or blog post that speaks about the necessity of having that entry activity. This is what this is all about. This is a five minute entry activity that allows students to really think and be prepared for the class. Now I go into my mini lesson. Again, it's the first lesson. I'm not trying to overwhelm my students. We're just focusing on understanding development because that's what they need for the whole unit. So this is where my mini lesson is, where I actually define development um, and maybe give some examples of development and like look around our community and seeing what the development is maybe two or three years ago, I can say, look in the um playground and we can see they were creating a new playground and it's bigger and better now. So that's an example of development. Or I can just, on my way to work, just look out for different things in their neighborhood that will help them understand development. So we have development refers to the process of growth process and or improvement in a specific area, such as cities, technology, or economy. And that's what the image is. Um, then we do a check for understanding, always check for understanding, always understand, always try to see what students understand. And that's where they can get their own real world experience. Also, in all this time, students were kind of quiet. So the check for understanding allows them time to speak so that they're just not sitting there listening to you or in silence the whole time. Research shows if we give per students permission to speak, then they're less disruptive. Pro tip right there. Then after that, because that was a quick mini lesson, but I didn't teach any um, skills as yet. So yes, we did R1, but I didn't do the R, sorry, yes, we did R4, but I didn't really do R1 as yet, where I'm teaching students how to cite specific textual evidence. Here is where you can go into the, um, 
here's where I go into my um my guided practice or my modeling where they're looking at this reading so they have the fuller reading at their desk I will be passing those out but this is just the first two paragraphs and in it I'm teaching them how to cite specific textual evidence as and I wanted to go beyond what they were doing in elementary school so I show them that I want you to say in the and whatever it is it's an article and the name of the article and you're going to answer the question all right I didn't want this video to be so much of me explaining this lesson I just wanted to be an overview of this unit plan so I'm just going to speed it up I did another um example and then this is the exit ticket write about one new thing you learned today regarding development in Accra how does understanding the concept of development help us understand a city like Accra better so if they read the whole story they will have um something to write here and that's the exit ticket all right, so this is the first lesson. Again, it's available free for download in my TPT store. Just check the link below. But then we go into the other lessons of this mini unit. And I love making mini units because I like when my lessons flow. I don't like to like haphazard lessons, just pick from here and there. I like buying whole units, not just lessons. Again, this is the same focus question for the whole mini unit. This is, sorry. This is the same essential question for the whole unit. And again, there's a blank page if you want to change it. And then here's the focus question. So in what way does the geography of New Delhi, India influence its development? So obviously we're doing India today. And our learning target is I'll be able to define geography and apply this de definition to identify specific examples and impacts seen in the geography and development of New Delhi. So again, we're doing a lot of that R1 and R4. Um, the geography of this area includes, so again, we're looking at image analysis to see if we can come up with a definition of geography, another image, another image, and then they got to write their own definition. So basically kind of what we did the day before. All right. And then I go over what geography means, right? And then another check for understanding, giving them permission to talk. Then we're going to look at this reading. I cut off the title. I guess it couldn't fit. And they're going to have it in front of them. So we're going to practice citing textual evidence. Ooh, I need to fix that. All right. So I just need to fix that one. And then we go into geography and development. Sorry. And then we go into the exit ticket. The exit question is almost similar to the one from the day before, but again, routines trying to get them understanding. This is how the lesson is going to be from an entry ticket to a mini lesson to me um, teaching them a skill to them, them working. And note to change slide number 10. It's not right. Then we go into lesson number three. Same focus question, same unit question. And now we're looking at Zurich, Switzerland. So it's Switzerland on, and then I'll show them where Switzerland is on the map. Oh, right here. I'm like, I know where Switzerland is. I've been to Switzerland. All right, right, yeah. And it's in what ways does the geography of Zurich, Switzerland influence its development? So we can see that it's landlocked, but I won't go into that right there, but you can see all of that. I will be able to identify specific examples and impact seen in the geography and development of Zurich, Switzerland. So again, we are practicing with that same citing and same type of information. Here, you can see that I've changed the entry um, activity. One, I didn't want it to get boring. And also, I'm no longer teaching vocabulary. Those were the two main vocabularies of the unit. So I changed to this one. And my kids often love this one. So in here, you have to guide, you have to combine two sentences to make um, one. You can use conjunctions like, like, and, like but, and because. You can eliminate words and you can um, combine sense, you, your combined sentence should encapsulate the essence of both. So you're not just going to delete one. You have to actually combine your sentences. 
So they're gonna um see how they can do it. So let's see. Did I come? And you can write them down as the students give them. So you have geography is the study of the earth and the development, development. So you can say geography is the study of the earth while development refers to the growth, something like that. But you have they, they're trying to make one these two sentences one. And this is a great activity because it um it forces students to think about the definition in not just the isolation, but now they have to actually manipulate it so that it makes sense. Then I go over what geography is. It's it's not just about landfall or climate, it's also about human interaction. So that is very important to have them know, have a check for understanding, go over the reading, go over another example using site textual evidence, and then we have an exit. And then finally, we get into the project that they're gonna be doing at the end of this mini unit. So they've learned about Ghana, India, and Switzerland. So now, the focus question is how does geography of specific cities such as Accra, Ghana, New Delhi, India, and Zurich, Switzerland influence the development? And then students will, or I will draft a Google Slides presentation that clearly demonstrates how the geography of Accra, New Delhi, and Zurich influence the development using the information examples I have previously researched. I researched previously. Then they're gonna do the same sentence combining activity. I upped the NT and made it four sentences, but it's very simple. So they just have to create and make one, combine and make one. And then I give them what the research is. This is the, hmm, the prompt. Imagine you are a junior researcher, ask to prepare a presentation for a conference, and it goes into setting up what that is. And then, I explained that they're gonna need a hook or grab it on the introductory slide, purpose of the a presentation, an overview, or agenda, and a thesis statement. So I purposely did this like this because honestly, even though it's a Google slide, I'm preparing them to be able to write it for information text. And you know, information text need an introduction. So even though it's not, oh, write an essay, I'm stepping, I'm preparing them for that in the future, but in a slides presentation. All right, and I go over it, color coordinate. And then I actually model how to do this. And then this is the exit ticket. So this is the whole mini unit. Every, oh, and this is the first thing. We have one more lesson and then that's the whole mini unit. Again, we are um, same focus question, learning target, another sentence combining activity. Again, I'm referring back to what the vision, the prompt is, what they're doing, their guidelines, and this is their presentation. Like this is how it should look. I'm gonna model what they have to do, like where they can click on certain things, like all about modeling how to use Google Slides and um, setting up their presentation, and then an exit ticket. So everything that you need for a mini unit from first lesson to even the projects associated with it. Um, if you like this, again, it's available for download. The link is in my description or you can make your own um, unit plan. I would say set it up, make a plan first. So start with the unit plan like this, a mini unit plan. Just do four to five lessons, three to five lessons. Set it up from the beginning to how you're gonna assess it. I decided to do Google Slides, but you can have something else. Set it up like that first, and then start making your lessons. But again, if you wanna just use what's there, you can use it. I am going to end here so that I can actually close out the video and um, fix my slide because I don't want to be giving out bad product. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for watching till the end. If you liked any part of this video, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up so that I can reach other teachers who might need support. Additionally, please subscribe to my channel and turn on 
your notification so that you can um, be notified when I upload another video. Again, thank you for watching and bye!